Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we're keeping warm and cozy by making chili Colorado. I've made other chilies before, but this is my first time specifically making this dish, so I'm sure it will be an interesting one. I'm going to start by cutting off the stems of the chili pods and removing the seeds. I'll be using six guajillo peppers and four pasilla peppers that I will be dry toasting in a pan for about a minute per side until the skins blister slightly. While I wait for that, I will get started on slicing my chuck roast into bite-sized chunks. I'm also making sure I keep an eye out on the chilies so they don't get burnt. But once they're all sliced, I'll set them aside and work on my onions and jalapenos. Something I'm trying to improve on is my knife work. It's not like I struggle with dicing an onion. I just cannot find a smooth way to do it without hesitating and taking long pauses between each slice. Maybe it comes with more repetition and more practice. With my jalapeno peppers, I was thinking of using two of them, but I didn't want the dish to be too hot, so I went for one instead. With all that going on, I got carried away with how long all of this prep work took, but I made sure to not burn the peppers and I turned off the heat as soon as it finished toasting. I'm going to toss the beef in a bowl with all-purpose flour, salt, and pepper. About midway through, I realized I needed more room to toss, so I got a bigger bowl and also added a little bit more flour since I feel that more pieces needed to be coated. I definitely made a mess and got flour all over the floor. Now that they're toasted, I'm going to place them in a bowl and cover with hot water for 20 minutes so that they could soften. But in terms of efficiency with time, I should have let the peppers soak while I did all that prep work. But on the brighter side, it gives me time to clean up a bit, especially all that flour on the floor. It's time to make the sauce, so I'm going to transfer the softened peppers to a food processor, along with oregano, cumin, a bit of salt and pepper, and a cup of that soaking water. Ooh, oh no. Now this is where the messy part begins. First off, I didn't cover the pouring hole and liquid came shooting out on the third pulse, but I covered it up and started it up again. After blending for a minute or so, I noticed that the sauce was still kind of stiff, so I added another half cup of soaking water, and the result was much better. And I knew it was done when I noticed the sauce was running down the walls as opposed to it just staying put. I strained the sauce and filtered it out into a measuring cup for an easier pour later on. I gave it another taste and added another tiny pinch of salt since I figured it could be a little saltier. It was a bit of a messy situation since the sauce left oily residue stains. I figured I could clean it now before the stains settle and it becomes harder to clean later on. Now it's time to brown the beef, so I'm going to heat up some olive oil in a large pot over medium heat and brown all sides. I think I may have added too much flour because the whole thing ended up looking like beef stroganoff by the end of it. But nonetheless, I'm sure it's not a big deal. Once the beef is browned, I'm going to add in my onions and jalapenos into the mix, followed by minced garlic cloves along with chicken stock. I will combine it all until it starts boiling, then back in goes the beef. Last but not least, the main ingredient that took a lot of hard work to make, the chili sauce. I'm going to mix it all up, cover it up, and let it simmer. The longer it simmers, the more tender the beef will be, so I will leave it for several hours until it's dinner time. Before leaving it alone, I gave it a quick taste test and noticed it needed salt, so I added some until it tasted good. Remember, taste as you go. At this point, the hard work is done, and it's time to let it do its own thing by slow cooking. And it's time for me to watch the Formula One race taking place in Spain. A little bright. Now it is dinner time. I'm going to make Mexican rice to serve on the side, so I'll heat up olive oil and mix that in with the rice, stirring frequently until it turns golden. Then, it's time to add in some chili powder, tomato bouillon, 
along with two cups of water and eight ounces of tomato sauce. No, 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 The tomato sauce started shooting at me, so I took the cover and restrained it so that I have less to clean up. But once it was all combined, I brought it to a simmer, covered it up so that I could check on the chili. I used a wooden utensil to press on the meat, and it was very, very tender. So the slow cooking was definitely worth it. If you are making this and prefer a thicker chili, remove the cover and increase the heat. Cook it until some of the moisture evaporates and until the chili reaches your desired thickness. It's looking really good and I can't wait to try it out, but we will still have to see how it tastes. Before we do, I'm going to fry some black beans in the pan to serve alongside the rice, and once they're all done, it's time to serve and finally eat. Oh, oh my goodness. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Look at that. Mm. Oh, it's so soft. I'm not sure if it's because my diet consists of repetitive meal plans each week, but I was overwhelmed by how good this turned out. I think my reaction speaks for itself. It's so good. That is it for me today in this video. Thank you so much for watching and sharing a space with me here at our virtual table. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below what you thought of this video. I'll see you all in the next one.